Hello and welcome to the beautiful city of Zurich, Switzerland. Yes, I am back after my vacation from the vacation in Germany, and I'm ready to film. Should be a pretty fun trip, only two days. Uh, pretty, just a brief stop over on the way to Italy, but uh, very much looking forward to it. And of course, Zurich is not the capital of Switzerland, that's Bern, but it's still arguably its most important city uh, in terms of just the, you know, culturally, in terms of uh, the economy, um, and in terms of its international reputation. Uh, and also academia, ETH Zurich, one of the best schools in all of Europe. In any case, we'll be uh, touring the city over the next couple days, doing some exploring um, over there. Very famous church, but more on that later. Um, and yeah, it should be a should be a good time. Should be some good good video. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are as well. But first, a quick hotel room tour before I mess it up much more than I already have. It's quite nice. Got the shower that weirdly is glass on that side, but wall on this side. But there is a curtain that you can close right there. Yeah, that's all my stuff. Two beds. And it's right in the heart of Zurich. A nice view out the window. Some other buildings. So yeah, a little, a little more expensive as most of the things here will be since it's one of the most expensive cities in Europe. In any case, let's go explore. Like Italy to some extent, there are a couple of major languages within Switzerland. It's not just one language that predominates. Now, luckily for me, Zurich is firmly in the German-speaking zone. But if you go out west to Geneva or Basel, go west to Geneva or Basel, um, you'll find a lot of French speakers. And if you go south, you'll find Italian speakers. Um, but in the meantime, life is super easy for me because I've even checking into the hotel is quite simple to communicate just with German. Here we are at a church. Had to get some fuel, sandwich, coffee, got free Nutella from this bakery, and a seat with the view. Well, because I'm a degenerate, I'm in a country that allows it. Got a nice little beer for the road. Though so unfortunately, it is probably the sweetest Rattler I've ever had in my life. If you like uh, your Rattlers to be a little more on the beer side, do not get this one. In any case, we're going to walk down to the Zurich Lake. Lake Zurich, I guess is probably what you'd say in English. And uh, just look out over the harbor, have a good little time, and uh, wait for the other member of my party to show up. So, off we go. I have never seen so many swans in my life as right at this moment. Unbelievable. So there are a bunch of water taxis that can take you up the canal through the city and also it appears they can take you across the lake. And oh look at that. And they also support Ukraine and its war against Russia. Well, Guten Morgen from Zurich. We are back out seeing the big sights today. It's our main day of sightseeing. And we start our day in front of one of the two most famous churches in all Zurich, the Grossmünster, built in 1220. Now, this church has a rivalry with the Fraumünster, which you can see in the background, located just across the river, as to which one is the oldest church in Zurich. Now, technically speaking, when we consider when the modern iterations were built, it's clearly the Fraumünster, which was built in the 1850s by Louis the German for his daughter. However, the Grossmünster sits on the spot which could be a burial site of uh, some saints, the saints, patron saints of Zurich, whose names I'm spacing on, and uh, archaeologists did find a Roman tomb underneath. So for that reason, it could date back even farther than the 1220 build date. Uh, that the facade currently has. So we're gonna take a step inside and see what's going on. Now oddly enough, this is not the part of the building you enter. You enter from the side where I took the original video. 
But this feels like it should be the entryway because it's got the towers. I believe you're allowed to go up. And there you have it, the patron saints, Felix and Regula. Patron saints of Zurich. So we're going up to Carl's Torm, Carl's Tower. And there's graffiti, somehow. And we've made it to the top. We have a beautiful view of Lake Zurich. Mountains in the background. And the Frau Munster. Also have two really annoying pigeons. And one annoying mother. One annoying mother. And there's the other tower that is not open for visitors. So a pretty excellent panoramic view of the city, but it would be nice if we could step out through the gates, which you cannot. But I think the best view is probably out over the lake. With the gross monster still in the background, highlighting how compact this old town is, we find ourselves in front of a statue of Ulrich Svingli, who is a Reformation leader, theologian in Switzerland. And he stands in front of the Wasserkirche, named so because it's right next to the Wasser, i.e. water. And then our next stop rises ahead of us. Well, actually, there are two of our next stops, St. Pete's and the Fraumünster. We're now at the Fraumünster, built by Louis the German for his daughter, Hildebrand or something, Hildebrand. Hilda Gildebrand or something. You know, it's one of those Germany names, I can't remember. Valtrout. Valtrout, exactly. Built in 823. Um, so it is technically older uh, than the Grossmünster, but like I said, there is some debate about that as to which is really the preeminent church in Zurich. So there's, of course, like pretty much every church here, now a Lutheran church. So we're going to step inside, see what's what. And we've now stepped through the gate into the Frau Munster. Now, like the Gross Munster, I'm afraid it may not allow picture taking inside, but in spite of that, I'm, I've been sneakily doing it because I'm feeling like a scumbag this trip, so I will do the scumbaggy stuff. Ooh, fun entrance way. Look at this, there's paintings. There's a snake. I don't know what, what these are supposed to be depicting, truth be told, but fun little uh, cloister type thing. Wow. We're now in the Fraumünster, and so my mom has pointed out a couple times, the churches here look very different than churches in France. Far less ornate, more basic, which, you know, it, it fits with the Lutheran ethos. Also pretty cool, like the ceiling design up there, very nice, uh, colorful glass windows, and of course the giant organ. So here we see a depiction of the church's founding. So it's Hildegard followed a stag here. Apparently this is the side of this where a church should be built. Now this church is pretty cool, but it violates one of my most fundamental rules about churches. You can either be a free church and ask me not to film, which I'll generally respect, or you can make me pay, but then I get to film. Now this one tried to do both. You have to pay five Swiss francs to get in, and then it says no filming. Well, no, I'm gonna pay the five euros. It's a church, it should be free anyway. Short walk later, we we're at the third of the four major churches here, St. Peter's, so. This one has a little less uh, clout, I think, than the two Munster churches, but still worth a visit. And from this side, we get the more complete picture of the church.
So, we're now in a public park with a beautiful view of the old town. I'll show you shortly here. As a huge number of students suggests, we are currently in front of one of the most famous technological institutes in the world, ETH Zurich. Certainly, I would say the premier one in Europe. Yeah. And you gotta take a fun cable car type thing up here, so everyone wins. And nice view. Got a lot of the stuff here you'd expect at a tech school. Got a mo giant Mobius strip. Got VR pool. Looks like. Modern art. I don't think they're hideous. Oh, there's Zurich. There's the sea, or the lake, I guess what that's called in English. It's a little bit hazy out today, unfortunately. But still see, oops, the churches. Let's get a little better viewpoint here. So we have way down there, some of the churches we saw earlier. There for the best view. But you can see the Alps a little better now. Well, we had some beer, some bratwurst, some fries looking out over the city of Zurich now. Back at the train station. Definitely a worthwhile little excursion if you're here for a day. We've come back down the mountain and ended up in Yuppie Central of Zurich. There's Google offices in these buildings. And all the other stuff that yuppies might like, like weird outdoor art that you can interact with. And also bike stores. It's really paradise. Easily the most famous lookout point onto the Zurich Lake is this statue of Ganymede, who I think was supposed to be like a... I can't remember, I want to say cupbearer of the Greek gods or something. I don't know. Something like that. In any case. He's got a statue overlooking the beautiful Alpine Lake. Fabulous over there, you see the Opera House. We'll get a closer look at that very shortly. And a nice fountain. As with basically every major city in Europe, there's an Opera House here. That is an absolutely beautiful building for one of the dumbest uh, artistic pursuits, opera. At least that's my opinion. Not quite as big as the one in Berlin, this doesn't appear to be, but, uh, or the one in France for that matter. But it is, uh, yeah, quite cool. We got Mozart, Wagner, Goethe, Schiller, 
So a lot of the famous Germanic uh, composers and writers. Hmm. Breathe it in and got a nice little square around it, so to speak. The Lake Zurich out there, some guy doing tricks on a bike right there. Oh, sort of a little slice of life. Finally, after some more coffee and a quick bite to eat, we've reached the final church of the day and probably the final site we'll see in Zurich, the Prediger Church. So we're gonna just pop our heads in real quick. I've already seen three churches today, so don't need to go too crazy here. Just see what's what. And it may actually even be closed already, so TBD. Well, church is closed, having some sort of event. So that's gonna be it for Zurich, I think. I'm done recording here. Uh, Quite a lot of fun. Still a very expensive city, but worth the trip. Uh, I enjoyed it. I'm definitely ready to move on to Italy though. So yeah, uh, I guess join me whenever I post the next video from Milan, Italy.